Welcome to another video lecture brought to you by Phil Sihab Ed. And today we are going to talk about Newton's second law of motion for grade 7 physics. The main purpose of this learning guide is to provide clear definitions and illustration of the terms used in physics to describe motion, speed, velocity, and acceleration, which are all crucial concepts for the analysis of motion in the later chapter. Hi there, my name is Ivy and I am part of Philsci Hub Ed, who helps create modules for chemistry students and physics teachers. So let us recall the Newton's first law of motion. Again, when we say Newton's first law of motion, this predicts the behavior of your object for which all existing force are balanced. The first law sometimes referred to as what we call law of inertia states, that if the forces acting upon an object are balanced, then the acceleration of the object will be zero. Objects at equilibrium will not accelerate. And according to Newton, an object will only accelerate if there is a net or unbalance acting upon it. And the presence of the unbalanced force will accelerate an object, changing its speed or its direction or both of the speed and direction. But before we go to our second law, let us have a trivia first. So did you know that Newton's law of motion are very important when it comes to car safety? Okay? So when there is a car crash, it can it's um, contents and the passenger decelerate rapidly and they experience great forces because of the very large deceleration, which can cause injury. And most of our modern cars today have these safety features that absorb kinetic energy in collisions. And this typically includes the seat belts, the airbags, the crample zones. And these features can increase the time taken for the change in speed of the occupants. That will reduce the deceleration that causes the force involved to be reduced and consequently serious injuries to be reduced. Now let's go to the second law of motion. But before we go to that, how is the force related to acceleration? As you can see here on the slide, when you have a small force, it will lead to a small acceleration. How about for the same force, same value for force, but half weight? What will be the acceleration? So as you can see here, the acceleration will be doubled. How about for same force, but doubled weight? It says here that your acceleration will be half. Newton's second law of motion pertains to the behavior of for which all existing forces are not balanced. And the second law states that the acceleration of an object is dependent upon the variable, which is the net force acting upon the object and the mass of your Object. So the acceleration of the object depends directly upon the net force acting upon the object and inversely upon the mass of the object. And as the force acting upon an object is increased, the acceleration of the object is increased and the mass of the object is increased, the acceleration of the object will decrease. So we can see that Newton's second law of motion can be stated like this. So the acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. This verbal statement can also be expressed in equation in terms of this. So as you can see here, your force or net force is equal to mass times the acceleration. And for us to derive the acceleration, we just have to divide your mass to the net force. In this figure five, so the smaller mass object experience a greater acceleration than a large object when they have an identical force being applied to this object. So for example, we have a block being pulled across a table by a force 10 Newton applied 
to a string attached to a block. A frictional force of 2 newton acts on the block results of contact with the table. So what is the total net force acting on it? So please take note of the figure. We have your block being pulled across a table and two horizontal forces are involved. Do you think there is a net force for the numerical sum of the two forces? So what will happen? So our version of second law implies that the imposed force is the total net or net force acting on the object. So force is a vector quantity whose direction is clearly important. If there is more than one force acting on, on an object, as there often is, we must then add these forces as vectors, taking into account their direction. And this process is illustrated in this figure. So a block is being pulled across the table by a force of 10 Newton applied through a string attached to the block, going to the right. And a frictional force, which is 2 Newton, acts on the block as a result of contact with the table. So what will be the total force acting on the block? So here are the following values that might be useful in solving the value for the acceleration. So let us take note that your force for, for the attached string has a different sign to the force of friction or your frictional force. So when we calculate for the force net or the um, net force, you will have 10 newton minus 2 newton would be equal to 8 newton. And from there, deriving our formula for acceleration, you just have to divide the net force to its mass. And this will give us acceleration, which is equal to 1.6 meters per second. So what is the relationship between the first law of motion and second law of motion? So when the when the net force acting on an object is zero, in this case, the acceleration must also be zero. If the acceleration is zero, then the velocity must be constant. And the first law tells us that if the net force is zero, the object moves with a constant velocity or maybe it remains at rest. Also, Newton's first law addresses that the special cases of second law in which the net force acting on an object is zero. So you can see a supplementary video in this module. Attached here is the link. So the physics video tutorial provides a basic introduction to Newton's second law of motion. This will give us a clear definition for Newton's second law of motion that states the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inver um, inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So let's try the following. So what average force is required to accelerate six kilogram block from rest to a final speed of 50 meters per second in 10 seconds? So what average force is required to accelerate a six kilogram block so we have here mass, which is 6 kilogram, our final speed, which is 50 meters per second, and the time, which is 10 seconds. Now let us recall our kinematic equations for us to determine the acceleration. Of course, we're going to use this, the final velocity equal to the initial plus acceleration times time. And since we are going to start from rest so that's why your velocity initially is zero and for us to know the acceleration we must divide 10 seconds to our velocity the final velocity which is 50 meters per second and this will give us acceleration which is equal to 5 meters per second squared And once you have your acceleration, 
you can just multiply this to its mass, which is 6 kilograms. And this will give you a net force, which is equal to 30 kilograms meters per second squared. So the average force required to accelerate a 6 kilogram block from rest to a final speed of 50 meters per second in 10 seconds is 30 kilograms meter per second squared. Next, 1,600 kilogram car moving at a speed 45 mile per hour comes to a stop after traveling a distance of 300 meter. What was the average force exerted by the brakes on the car? So again, let us take note of the following given. So as you can see here, I did not provide a given for the initial velocity because we are going to convert 45 miles per hour into meters per second. So I will give you five seconds to calculate this. Okay. So this will be the converted velocity in terms of meters per second. So you have 20.1 meters per second. And the final velocity, which is equal to zero meters per second, the distance, which is 300 meters, and acceleration and force, which is um, not given on the problem that we have to identify. So again, we have to recall our kinematic equation. So of course, we are going to use the final velocity squared equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times d. And since your final velocity, um, and since we're uh, talking about the car coming to stop, it means that your final velocity would be equal to zero. So that's why 0 raised to 2 would be equal to initial velocity 20 minus 1 raised to 2 plus 2 times A times 300. So doing the math, we just have to get the square of 20.1. And this will, uh, this will give us 2 minutes to answer. OK, so here, 404.01. Plus 600 A. Now, how do we get the acceleration? So we need to transpose 404.01 on the left side which will give us a negative value with remaining 600A. So for us to get A, we have to divide everything by 600. So this will cancel 600 and giving us Acceleration equal to negative 0 0.674. And since we have our acceleration, we can just simply substitute it in our formula in getting the force or the average force, which is equal to 1,600 times negative 0 0.6734 meters per second squared. And so our net force or the average force exerted by the car on the uh, by the brake on the car would be equal to negative 1077 kilograms meters per second squared so you could also try the following problems for this the final answer is 694 newtons 
For this, the answer would be the trailer must have had a mass of at least 2,000 kilograms. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening.